Hey guys, today I'm going to do a video talking about points of condenser. There's three things we're going to talk about today, and the first is how to set the points up, and the second is how to set the gap on the points, and the third is the how to clean the points. Because a lot of times on these older engines, when you lose spark or get a weak spark or an intermittent spark, the points need cleaned. And we're going to show you how to how to clean the points here. And also, when they act up, you could have a bad condenser. And all a condenser is, is a capacitor. That's all they are. And when you buy your points of condenser, they'll come with this little piece of plastic right here. And this is a tool for installing the wire on it. As you can see, the wire has a spring on there, which is what holds it. And then when you take this tool right here, you squeeze it to compress the spring to get the wire in or out. So don't lose this when you open up your pack of points and condenser. I'm using the Briggs and Stratton three and a half horse Pushmar engine as an example. It's actually my piston valve engine which I used, I just made a video one last summer so if you're interested in unusual engines check that out. But the points and condenser is set up the same on basically any older small engine bigger Briggs and Stratton like a 12 horse or a, a 5 horse or anything really because it's all basically the same setup. And this is my piston valve engine. You notice it's just like a regular Pushmar engine except it's missing the carburetor and everything which will actually make it easier to show you everything on this. Now, first thing you do you take out three bolts. There's one up here, one here, and one here. There's 7 sixteenths drive and your whole flywheel cover just lifts right off. But there's your recoil mechanism. Now we got to pull the flywheel. The first thing you got to do is remove the starter cup on this. And you also notice this has a cast iron flywheel on it. That's because this engine don't have a blade on it, and it's just an experimental engine too at that. But most of your uh, push bar engines will have an aluminum flywheel, so the whole flywheel will be aluminum. Because on push bar engines, your blade actually acts as the flywheel. And for removing the flywheel. You don't have to have these tools, but they make it a lot easier. This here will grip the cup on there, and this here will hold the flywheel, keep it from spinning. These are actually handmade, but you can buy them. It makes it easier having this cast iron flywheel here, because uh, this should grip this a lot easier. You can see it, it's hard to get them to line up exactly right, but the catch is in the fins there. Uh, I'll show you another method too. But after you get this one there, you take this. Sometimes it's better to have two people do this. And you can just, sometimes you have to hit this with a hammer to break it loose. But I'll show you another method I use a lot. All you need is a straight screwdriver and a hammer. You let this sit on there like this. Just keep hitting it. It'll break loose just like that. You can do the same thing for tightening. Sometimes this works easier than uh, using the actual flywheel tools. And this is your starter clutch here. It's got like ball bearings inside so it'll only spin one way and it'll lock the other. And also before you put this back on there, spray some like like WD-40 or penetrating oil down through here and into the top hole in there to keep everything oiled up real good. You want to use a thin oil like that. Okay, now we're going to pull the flywheel. To do this, you need a something you can pry underneath the flywheel, like this. But you got to be careful. You don't want to put too much pressure or you'll crack the housing, the aluminum housing. Then you need a brass hammer to hit the shaft. Now, the reason you need a brass hammer, as you can see, brass is softer and it absorbs the blow. So you're not, you're not bending over the sides of the crankshaft here. The hammer is absorbing it. Now, I've actually got by with using a rubber mallet on these before. Sometimes they are uh, not holding very good, and sometimes they'll work just as good. That's all you got to do. And your fly will pull right off, and you'll have a key right here. Well, guys, I kind of messed up here. Instead of redoing the whole video, I thought I'd just show you what I did. I could have swore. I had a point of adventure set up on this engine. But I got the magnetron coil in here off another engine on it. As you can see, 
I knew something was wrong as soon as that mist seemed to cover. It will always have a cover like this. So we'll just forget about this engine and we'll do everything on this one. Okay, after all that, after you get the flywheel off, you just take these two quarter inch drive screws out of the, uh, I call this the points condenser cover, or the points cover. It keeps dirt or oil or anything from getting down inside there and corroding your points. And this will just lift right off like that. You can see your points and condenser and everything. Like I said earlier, the first thing we're going to talk about is how everything's set up here. I'm not going to take everything loose just to show you. But uh, you got a wire right here that comes down from your coil, your magneto. You can see right here. It runs down and comes out of the coil down here. And it'll hook into the hole on the condenser along with this wire here, which will be your shutoff wire, which will either, either feed to your blade brake system or the uh, switch on the carburetor. So when you throttle down, it shuts off. In this case, I just got it set up like this. I hook it to a, to a switch, external switch. That's the only two wires that hook to your condenser. The outside of your condenser is held with the clamp right here, which grounds the condenser. And your point over here opens like this. There's a little plunger right there. It's round, sticking up right there. That's what lets the points close. It'll be riding like this. And what I'm going to do now, I'm going to turn the engine over so you can see how the points are opening. Right there, they're closed just for a second. See, so they're open the whole time until it gets to that one point and they close just for a split second. And I'll show you how that works. On the crankshaft, you can see right here where the plunger rides, there's a little dip right here. That's where the spring tension of the points force the plunger to bottom out right here and then it opens right back up. This kind of works the same way as the lobe on a camshaft except it works opposite. This is a crankshaft out of a five horse. It's the same thing on all of them. So that's basically how they're set up. Now I'm going to show you how to set the gap on it. Now you want to get the points so they're open. It don't matter what position they're in just as long as they're open if you look, there's this real tiny gap right there. You see there's a little gap right there. And that's when you want to measure them. Okay, well most small engines you have to look it up for your Pacific model, but for these it's about 20 thousandths gap. What these are supposed to be set at. And it looks like it's a little small, so we'll uh, change that setting. And you check it like this when the points are open. You can see it's opening just a little bit more so that means this is a set too small so we're going to have to adjust it and what you do you just loosen this right here just until it loosens up so you be able to slide the condenser and this is how you make your adjustments i slide it down like this and bring this up just until it touches like that you get just a little tiny bit of drag on it and then you go ahead and tighten that up then we'll check it again just to make sure nothing slid. And it's just about right. And you can see it's a twenty thousandths feeler gauge. You have to have this you have to have this type of feeler gauge for this to work. Because your spark plug type, the round ones, they won't uh, you can't use that on these. And that's really all there is too to setting the points and how they're set up. Now we'll get to how to clean them. So just about any time on these older engines that you just lose spark, like if your engine's been sitting all winter and you get it out in the spring to cut and you lose spark, just about every time it's the points being dirty here, not allowing them to work. So I'm going to show you how you clean them. Okay, the first thing you need to do is get you a piece of sandpaper. This is a 220 grit, so it's pretty fine and I, that's about what I like to use. I mean, you can use a, a smaller grit, which would be rougher, but uh, I find I get good results with about a 220 grit paper. It works pretty good. 
finer the better in my opinion it takes longer if you go finer than this but you get better results okay now what you got to do you got to turn the engine over until the points close see right there they're closed right there okay what you want to do what I always do is just get underneath here and just pull up on it a little bit so they open then slide your sandpaper in between them and then just keep rubbing it back and forth for about a about a minute about all you need to do run it up and down and back and forth and what what this does a lot of times when the engine sets there'll be a there'll be rust build up in there or like a pitted place and it'll cause the points not to work right and after you do this we'll set the points and after you do this you'll want to check your points again only reason I showed doing the uh, setting the gap first is because usually you don't have to do this when you set up brand new points but uh, if you're working on your engine you always want to check your points gap because uh, you can take out a little too much metal as you can see it's actually just a little loose in there so we need to adjust them now and we'll do the same thing again pull it until you get a little bit of drag on it then tighten it back up and you can just leave your feeler in there and squeeze it and keep the tension and you can tighten it back up while you're holding it you don't want to get this real real tight because it's just going into aluminum that's about all you got to do then once you get everything set and you go ahead and put your cover back on it here get your screws lined up like I said this just keeps dirt and everything from getting in there And then you get ready to put your flywheel back on. Another point I forgot to mention, your spring hooks down inside this on the top of it. It kind of goes up inside there. And it comes down here and hooks on this little peg right here. This screw right here is what holds the points in there together. Points, this is out of a bigger engine here. And if you look, see how it comes out of there. There's a little slot right there that just slides into. See, it's kind of tricky to do. And that's how it pivots like a hinge almost and you can see how your spring hooks into it and on the small ones your bolt goes through here you can actually turn this so you just have to make sure that it's pretty much parallel with it where it's supposed to be and we'll switch back to this engine just to show you this since I don't have a flywheel handy for the other engine we'll just stick this back one here line up your keyway slot right there some people will put the keyway in first, but it usually it works better to do it like this. And you can take a screwdriver right there and just pound that in flush right there. And then put your starter clutch back on it. Now you can use either method to tighten it back up. Like I said, pound it on like I, like I took it off or use the two flywheel tools to tighten it back up. You got to make sure it's real tight because if it's loose, if it's not tight enough, you'll be a, the engine will shear a flywheel key real easy. Because the flywheel is loose on there, you can kick back on there. Okay, now while you're working on the points, after you get the flywheel on, you might as well set the gap on the, your uh, magneto. And they're often called an armature or a coil. I always refer to them as a coil, but it's actually a magneto. And the first thing you want to do is loosen your two screws on here. And once you get them loose, your coil will move on here so you can set the gap on there and the problem is if you get if you get it too far away from it you'll have a weaker spark and if you get it too close it'll actually be rubbing on there so you gotta get it just right now what some people do I never have myself but they just put a business card in here because the thickness of a business card is just the right amount of gap here I always use a feeler gauge on it and it's a uh, supposed to be between six and ten thousandths I'm setting this one at six because I like to get it as close as I can to it 
it's hard to do them both to keep it from moving but uh, you can do it you get about the same amount of drag on both of them and it'll work just fine and after you tighten it up we'll check it again just to make sure nothing moved on it that's really about the only way you can do it and see that's just about right and after you get the points and the air gap set on the coil you'll want to set your spark plug the way your engine's tuned up just right and what I always set this spark plug about 35 thousandths most manufacturers recommend 30 but uh, so you probably be better off to go with the 30 thousandths gap on it and after you get all that done you go ahead and put your flywheel cover back on make sure your spark plug gets in the groove right there and get your bolts back in it Might be best to use a socket on there. I just had this laying there. So see how that would work. And you're pretty much done. And that's uh, really all there is to a basic tune up on a small engine. If it's a bigger engine, you might want to replace your fuel filter. And uh, you always want to replace your air, fil air filter too. That's pretty much a basic tune up for one of them. So, well, guys, thanks for watching. If you got any questions or comments, leave a comment below or send me a message and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. So, Thanks for watching.